If you've ever been to Chicago, you've probably noticed those two skyscrapers fronting State Street, Adams Street, and Quincy Court in the heart of the Chicago Loop and the city's central business district. Yes, that's right, those are the Century and Consumers buildings. Once so famous and full of people, but today they're threatened with demolition. Are you intrigued by this topic and want to know more about it? Welcome to the Apex Channel. Today we're talking about the towers that the U.S. government wants to destroy, so stay with us until the end and be informed about the progress. As always, click the like, subscribe, and bell buttons, and always be notified when the new video is ready for watching. Now if you're ready, let's start. The Century Building is historically unique for two important reasons. First, the distinct vertical expression of the building's exterior elevations portends the transition from the Chicago school buildings of the late 19th century to the early decades of the 20th century. The emphasis on verticality is achieved with strong vertical bands and understated recessed spandrels. Second, the overall design of the facade ornament is a rare example of Neo-Manueline, inspired by the historic Portuguese style, influenced architecture in the Midwest. The proliferation of complex ornaments around building openings such as windows and doors features shields with dragons, botanical motifs, and pinnacles, and contributes to the diversity of the architectural environment within the Chicago Loop. Completed in 1915, the 20th Century Building, as it was originally called, is an excellent example of a tall shop's building. Its upper floors were occupied by a wide variety of tenants through the years, including tailors, furriers, beauty shops, clothes shops, lawyers, brokers, and dentists, reinforcing the commercial district within the loop. The 20th Century Building's name was changed to the Century Building in 1917 after the newly named Century Trust and Savings Bank signed a 20-year lease for the second story. In 1949, Home Federal Savings and Loan Association purchased the Century Building, resulting in alterations to the storefronts and lobby space. The other building, the iconic Consumers Building, represents the last period of the large-scale Chicago School, also known as the Chicago Commercial Style Commissions, along with its neighbor, the Century Building. Typical of this commercial style, the 21-story building is constructed with a steel frame and clad in white architectural terracotta made locally in Chicago, with a vertically oriented streamlined design highlighted with ornaments. The steel structure is supported by 38 caissons that took 200 men two months to drive into the ground. One week after the building permit was granted, a new Chicago building code limited the height of buildings to 200 feet. Upon entering the building, the lobby is composed of Italian marble-clad walls and ceiling, all authentic to the original architect's vision and design. Bronze fixtures, finish, and surfaces, including elaborate bronze elevator doors, are original features within the lobby. Several alterations have been made to the ground floor facade of the building over time. The bronze canopy over the State Street entrance was removed along with two storefronts. These storefronts were replaced with modern storefronts. The original roof, which included a frieze band and cornice with lights, located at the very top of the building was also modified. However, despite the glorious history of these two skyscrapers, they now stand empty in the city center and rot. This is the main reason for their potential demolition, because the maintenance of buildings that are not used is too expensive. The irreparable damage that the demolition of these historic buildings will have on South State Street cannot be overstated. Their facades provide an important anchor for the existing street walls along State Street, Adams Street, and the Chicago Federal Center, with which Ludwig Mies van der Rohe felt it important to frame his buildings. If demolished, not only will Chicago lose two important early Chicago school skyscrapers by two of its most important architecture firms, but it'll also create a huge void and open site which will adversely impact and vacate the energy from one of downtown Chicago's most vibrant thoroughfares and intersections. Chicago does not need another vacant lot or windswept plaza, nor does it need the shame of losing more of its early historic skyscrapers. Every effort should be made to repurpose these buildings and return them to life and, perhaps, the tax rolls. But some people are against that demolition. Preservation activists spoke in favor of not only landmarking the buildings, but in restoring and fighting suitable reuse for them. Demolishing the buildings, they said, would leave a permanent hole in State Street's distinctive street wall, hinder attempts to have the State Street District declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and destroy some of the finest remaining examples of the famed Chicago School style of architecture. And we agree with them. It's a great shame to destroy such a cultural heritage and erase every trace of them in the history of Chicago. 
Do you agree with us? What do you think? How can we save these buildings? Write to us your suggestions, comments, or even criticisms. Make sure to drop us a like. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification. That's it for today. See you again next time.